In a world where everything you repress, hide, or fear takes on a life of its own, a dark place where parts of you, often ignored or denied, reveal their true face. This is the territory of the shadow, a fascinating and, at the same time, frightening concept developed by the renowned Swiss psychologist Carl Gustav Jung. Jung, one of the pillars of analytical psychology, proposed that we all have a shadow, a hidden part of our psyche that stores our rejected and less desirable aspects. But what does this shadow really mean? And why should we pay attention to it? For Jung, the shadow is composed of everything we do not want to admit about ourselves. It includes our weaknesses, primitive impulses, repressed desires, and even unexplored talents. It is the counterpart of our ego, the face we show to the world. The ego is our social mask, built from social expectations and norms, while the shadow is what we hide behind this mask. But before we delve into the theory, think of an everyday situation. Have you ever caught yourself overreacting to something seemingly trivial? Maybe someone criticized you, and instead of handling it rationally, you felt intense anger or deep sadness. This is a classic example of the shadow manifesting. These intense feelings are often a reflection of parts of ourselves we prefer to ignore. Jung believed that the shadow is not purely negative. Although it contains our darker aspects, it also holds incredible potential for personal growth. It is like a dark cave that, when explored, can reveal hidden treasures. He argued that by confronting and integrating our shadow, we could achieve a state of individuation, a process of becoming who we truly are whole and complete. But why do we avoid this shadow so much? The answer lies in human nature and our need for social acceptance. From an early age, we learn to hide certain behaviors and emotions to fit the expectations of our parents, friends, and society in general. Over time, these repressed parts accumulate, forming the shadow. However, ignoring this part of ourselves can lead to serious consequences, such as stress, anxiety, and even destructive behaviors. To better understand this dynamic, we need to look at the life and works of Jung. Born in 1875 in a small village in Switzerland, Jung showed a deep interest in the world of dreams and the unconscious from a young age. His career as a psychiatrist and analyst was marked by an unceasing quest for understanding the human psyche. And it was through this journey that he developed the concept of the shadow. Let's delve deeper into Jung's ideas and explore how we can identify our own shadow. After all, we all have a dark side, but few have the courage to confront it. To understand the shadow, it is essential to revisit our earliest life experiences. From childhood, we are bombarded with messages about what is acceptable or not in our society. Our parents, teachers, and friends play fundamental roles in shaping our personality. But while they help mold our ego, they also contribute to the formation of our shadow. Think about the times you were reprimanded for expressing anger or sadness or the occasions when you were encouraged to always be strong and self-sufficient, even when you felt fear or insecurity. These repeated experiences lead us to repress certain parts of ourselves to avoid criticism or rejection. Over time, these repressed aspects do not disappear. They simply hide in the shadow. Jung suggested that the shadow is formed by everything that does not fit into our conscious self-image. If you see yourself as a kind and gentle person, any feelings of anger or desire for revenge will be relegated to the shadow. Similarly, 
if you consider yourself rational and logical, your emotional impulses may end up being repressed. But the shadow is not just individual, it also has a collective component. Jung spoke of a collective shadow, composed of the repressed aspects of society as a whole. This can include prejudices, fears, and desires that a culture prefers to ignore or deny. The collective shadow can manifest in major social movements, wars, or discriminations. The process of recognizing and integrating the shadow is what Jung called shadow work. This work is not easy, as it requires courage to face parts of ourselves that we prefer to forget. However, Jung believed that this is an essential step towards individuation and personal growth. One of the most effective ways to begin this work is through self-observation and reflection. Pay attention to your intense emotional reactions and ask yourself, why does this affect me so much? Often these reactions are valuable clues about aspects of your shadow. Dreams can also be a rich source of insights as the shadow frequently manifests through dream figures and symbols. Moreover, close relationships can be powerful mirrors for our shadow. The qualities that irritate us most in others often reflect aspects of ourselves that we reject. This is known as projection, a defense mechanism in which we attribute to others characteristics that we do not recognize in ourselves. Jung's story also provides a living example of how to confront the shadow. He himself went through a period of deep psychological crisis known as his confrontation with the unconscious. During this phase, Jung delved into his own dreams and visions, confronting dark figures and unknown aspects of his psyche. This painful but transformative process resulted in one of his most influential works, The Red Book. So, how can we follow Jung's footsteps and begin to integrate our shadow? The answer lies in the willingness to explore the unknown within ourselves, embracing both the light and the darkness. It is a challenging path, but essential for a full and authentic life. And so we ask ourselves, are we ready to face our inner demons and discover the hidden treasures in our shadow? Let's now explore how the shadow influences our daily lives. Have you ever wondered why you sometimes react disproportionately to small provocations? Or why certain types of people seem to elicit intense emotions in you, whether positive or negative? The answer may lie in your shadow. Think about the last time someone deeply irritated you. Maybe it was a colleague who constantly interrupts you or a friend who always wants to have the last word. This intense irritation may be a reflection of your own shadow. Perhaps you have repressed your assertiveness. And seeing someone act assertively, your shadow manifests as irritation. This is the phenomenon of projection in action. Projection occurs when we attribute to others characteristics or emotions that we do not recognize in ourselves. It is a way of dealing with parts of our shadow without confronting them directly. However, by projecting, we miss the opportunity to integrate these aspects into our conscious personality. The shadow can also manifest in self-sabotaging behaviors. Imagine you have a big dream of starting your own business, but constantly procrastinate, making excuses not to take the first step. It might be that, Somewhere deep in your psyche, you fear failure or success, and these repressed fears manifest as procrastination. Shadow work does not just mean recognizing these aspects, but also finding ways to integrate them positively into your life. For example, acknowledging your repressed anger can allow you to find healthy ways to express it instead of letting it explode at inopportune moments. 
Accepting your need for assertiveness can help you set healthier boundaries in your relationships. There are several tools and practices that can aid in shadow work. Psychotherapy is one of them. Providing a safe space to explore these aspects with the help of a professional. Techniques of meditation and mindfulness can also be helpful, allowing you to observe your emotions and thoughts without judgment, creating a space for the shadow to emerge. Another powerful practice is therapeutic writing. Keeping a journal where you record your emotions, dreams, and daily reactions can reveal patterns and aspects of the shadow that you might not have noticed. Dreams, in particular, are a valuable window into the unconscious. Jung believed that analyzing dreams can reveal aspects of the shadow and aid in the process of integration. Art can also be a means to explore the shadow. Drawing, painting, or even dancing can express emotions and repressed aspects in ways that words cannot. Jung, for example, used art to explore his own unconscious, creating vivid images that reflected his inner experiences. Confronting the shadow is not an easy task. It requires courage to look within oneself and accept both light and darkness. But it is an essential step for personal growth and individuation. As Jung said, who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakes. And so, we leave the reflection. Which parts of you are still in the shadows, waiting to be discovered and integrated? Besides affecting our individual lives, the shadow also exerts a powerful influence on society as a whole. Jung identified the concept of the collective shadow, which refers to the repressed aspects of a group's, cultures, or nation's psyche. These dark aspects can manifest in destructive ways, such as prejudices, discrimination, and violence. The collective shadow is formed by the impulses, desires, and fears that a society prefers not to acknowledge. These aspects are projected onto minority or marginalized groups, creating scapegoats. This dynamic can be observed throughout history in events such as religious persecutions, genocides, and other forms of oppression. A clear example of the collective shadow in action is the Holocaust. During World War II, Nazi Germany projected its fears and resentments onto the Jewish population, resulting in one of the darkest episodes in human history. This is an extreme example, but it illustrates how the collective shadow can lead to devastating consequences when not recognized and integrated. However, the collective shadow does not only manifest in extreme historical events, it is present in our daily lives, in subtle prejudices and discriminatory attitudes that often go unnoticed. For instance, racism, sexism, and homophobia are forms of the collective shadow that continue to affect societies around the world. To confront the collective shadow, a conscious effort of introspection and transformation is necessary, both at an individual and societal level. Education and awareness are powerful tools in this process. When we recognize our own prejudices and work to overcome them, we contribute to the integration of the collective shadow. Social movements that fight for justice and equality also play a crucial role in confronting the collective shadow. They bring to light issues that society prefers to ignore, forcing a confrontation with these dark aspects. Art and literature also have an important role in exploring and integrating the collective shadow. Works that address themes of social injustice, prejudice, and discrimination help raise awareness and promote empathy. Authors like James Baldwin, Toni Morrison, and Gabriel Garcia Marquez explored in their works the dark aspects of their respective cultures, offering a deep insight into the collective shadow. But how can we, individually, 
contribute to the integration of the collective shadow. The first step is self-awareness, recognizing and confronting our own prejudices and discriminatory attitudes is essential. This can be uncomfortable, but it is a necessary step for personal and social growth. Open and honest dialogue is also fundamental. Discussing issues of injustice and prejudice with empathy and understanding can help dismantle the collective shadow. It is important to listen to others' experiences and acknowledge the validity of their lived realities. The integration of the shadow is an essential step in the process of individuation, which Jung described as the path to becoming a complete and authentic version of oneself. But how can we practically integrate our shadow and move towards individuation? The first step is self-acceptance. Recognizing that we all have a shadow and that it is part of our totality is crucial. This means accepting both the positive and negative aspects of our personality. Self-acceptance is not a passive process. It requires active effort to confront our fears, insecurities, and repressed desires. The practice of self-reflection is a powerful tool in this process. Keeping a journal, meditating, or simply dedicating time to reflect on our actions and reactions can reveal patterns that indicate the presence of the shadow. Dream analysis, a central technique in Jungian psychology, can also offer valuable insights into the dark aspects of our psyche. Seeking professional support, such as psychotherapy, can facilitate the integration of the shadow. A trained therapist can help identify and work with repressed aspects in a safe and structured manner. Jung developed methods such as active imagination, where the individual dialogues with internal figures, including aspects of the shadow, to promote integration. Furthermore, cultivating compassion and empathy, both for yourself and others, is fundamental. Recognizing that everyone has a shadow and that we are all in a process of growth can help reduce judgment and criticism. Empathy allows us to see beyond flaws and negative behaviors, understanding the underlying experiences and wounds. The process of shadow integration is ongoing and can be challenging. It requires patience and perseverance as confronting dark aspects can be painful. However, the benefits are immense. Integrating the shadow leads to a sense of wholeness and authenticity allowing us to live fuller and more meaningful lives. Jung described individuation as the blossoming of who we truly are. It is a process of self-discovery that allows us to embrace our complexity and live more truthfully. By integrating our shadow, we become not only more aware of ourselves, but also more capable of handling life's tea challenges with resilience and wisdom, the shadow, often feared and avoided, is actually a rich source of self-knowledge and potential. Confronting it requires courage and a willingness to explore the darkest parts of ourselves, but in doing so, we can discover unexplored talents, develop a deeper understanding of our impulses and emotions, and cultivate a more authentic and balanced life. The process of shadow integration is continuous and dynamic. It is not about reaching a final goal, but about a constant journey of self-discovery and growth. Each step on this journey brings us closer to who we truly are, allowing us to live more consciously and fully. Jung reminded us of the importance of looking inward, of confronting the unknown within our own psyche, and in doing so, we not only transform ourselves, but also contribute to the transformation of the society around us. The integration of the shadow, both individual and collective, is a path to healing and unity. So, the final question we leave is, 
Are you ready to face your shadow, embrace your complexity, and discover the transformative power it contains? The journey is challenging, but the treasures hidden in the darkness are worth every step.